All right, let's take a look at our final mock-up here and see what's needed to uh, get everything where it needs to be before we sign off on this and start wrapping our material. So there's a couple important areas uh, on our dashboard and our lower crash pad here that are real critical to uh, fitment that we want to be mindful of before we start wrapping our finished materials. So probably the most critical and most sensitive area to get uh, dialed in here is going to be up under the brow here where we come down under our gauges. So what we want to make sure is that when we do our trimming and uh, fitting that we can actually tuck behind this bull nose. So this lip is actually designed to go inside of here, not set on top of here. Um, I've seen a lot of dashboards where uh, we have too much buildup on the bottom side. They're actually landing and resting on top of the gauges. Uh, right position is really on top of that bull nose. And then we want to make sure we have enough room on our sides as we tuck in there. And also how it draws up to the dashboard underneath. So we're going to have material tucking and folding under here. We'll make sure we got room and area for everything to go. And then same thing on the other side. Plenty of room in there. And then our lower crash pad. That's how that sits in there. Uh, and again, this is not tight. It's just sitting in position there just to check everything. And so the important thing on the uh, lower knee pad here, so I've seen a lot of uh, upholstery jobs where they just put too much foam on here. And the real correct detail here is going to be more of a pyramid shape uh, coming to the edge here. So rather than a rounded uh, look, it really should be a straight, slight bull nose and then angled back. Okay, so I think uh, I'm pretty happy with the way this is all going to sit in here. Uh, shouldn't have any problem drawing this down uh, when we nut it down. And I think we're as close as we can get it to uh, original factory shape with our hardening of our uh, form there and reshaping. I think we're going to be looking real good. So now I'm going to take uh, some POR15, cover over all this uh, body work and mesh and uh, get a good seal on there. We'll sand it up and then we're ready for upholstery. Right, so getting started here, uh, so I've selected this foam here uh, out of my stockpile. I have several different thickness foams and different types of foam, different densities. Uh, this one is about 16th inch thick. This particular foam uh, was something I acquired a few years back. Um, did a cabinet job, uh, actually a German cabinet job. Somatic cabinets came uh, packed in all this foam here. I thought it was really cool stuff. So I hung on to it, and uh, I think it's going to work out perfect for what we need to do here. Also, the contact cement we're going to be using uh, to spray this down, high strength 90. Um, let's go ahead and spray out the lower knee pad and see what that looks like. All right, I think we'll just do two coats for good measure. So shop temperature about 80 degrees in here right now. I'm giving it about 10 minutes. So that's our finished look. We just need to trim it off. got our pattern cut so starting with the top first we're going to use our super adhesive and we're going to contact this area right here this area right here and right along the top edge and the back, the back side of this lip all the way down so next I'm going to take the leatherette outside and let it warm up in the sun for probably 10 minutes get it nice and hot and supple. Uh, bending this inside corner here is going to be real tough and when we pull it around on this shape here it's going to be really tough. Pretty thick material, a lot thicker than our original uh, so we're going to wrestle with that a little bit. The softer it is the better it's going to go. Okay, so after fooling with this outside in the sun for about an hour and a half, uh, successfully been able to wrap the top section, and I took it back out on the car to mock that up just to make sure everything's going to work out with the dashboard and tuck in there the way we'd like it. So that's pretty much what it's going to look like. 
uh, inside there. Those little pinch tabs that fold over, those come in real handy. I'm going to pull that thing pretty tight to make those bends. Um, I'd set the camera up out there, guys, for you and uh, show you how to do this. <laughs> but really, my camera is just going to overheat and uh, doing this other side. I'm going to be gone for another hour and a half. So let me glue this edge up here. Um, we'll get that folded over and just see what it looks like. It's really just something you have to fool with, pull on it, cut it, relieve it, and uh, you should be in pretty good shape. Right, after uh, about two more hours of wrestling with that out in the sun, uh, final mock-up here just to make sure everything's going to fit in there and tuck in the way we want it. I think we're going to be okay now, and it looks like our shape's going to turn out. And just a quick look at the inside here, how it all ties off and sticks down. Okay, so let's go ahead now and move on to our armrest. So really all I'm doing is I'm just retracing the original patterns to some degree here and seeing how they attached it and how the folds and cuts were done to stick everything down. You can see on the back side here of this handle, that's pretty much how it was done. And then pressing it back together. Spreading our glue and then warming things up in the sun. Really. And then our finished look. And then moving on to our garnish rail. So this one's a real simple one. We're just gonna brush out two coats of uh, spray grade contact cement. And this is the contact cement we'll be using. And then back outside in the sun. And then trimming and applying our super adhesive on the back side. And then when we're dry, we just roll it over. And this will be our finished look for our door rails. And armrests. Okay, so then moving on to our main dashboard. So let's take a look at this detail here with some different materials and, uh, and see what I'm using and why I'm using it. So here's the material we're using to wrap it. Uh, this is a little bit thicker than the original and uh, our original shape of our brow here is really quite thin and uh, gives a really nice detail. If we could wrap it uh, directly onto our new substructure here, which has been solidified and shaped. Although I don't think we're gonna be able to glue directly to our uh, newly shaped solidified substructure here. And the reason we can't do that is because eventually what's gonna happen, um, even though we could pull it really tight and get a nice detailed edge uh, all the way around this, um, eventually we're gonna heat up, we're gonna have movement underneath it and uh, have some telegraphing coming through down the road. So just to kind of head all that off, we're gonna have to put some kind of foam substrate underneath. So if we use our thin foam underneath our leather rack, I think we can still maintain a real nice looking front edge on our brow there. And uh, we'll allow it to slip on the foam. We're not gonna contact cement to this. Uh, that'll allow for uh, any kind of expansion and contraction and, and keep our dimpling and uh, telegraphing to a minimum. And comparing it with a thicker foam, this is quarter inch. This, is, this would be a lot more forgiving. But then uh, what happens is our look we just kind of lose our definition. We just become too thick here, I think. Uh, so if we can maintain that sharper, crisper edge on there, I think that's gonna make for a better looking detail. 
All right, let's just take a quick look at our masking here and see why we're doing it this way. So uh, when I spray the contact cement to adhere the foam to it, um, I don't want any of that glue wrapping around our uh, bullnose edge there. And the reason I don't want any glue on that edge is because when I pull the finished material over there, I don't want any kind of uh, sticking or any kind of lumping up. We just want a real smooth transition right on that edge. and then slowly beveling this cut all the way back. And then taking a look at our finished edge there. So this will really help when we pull tight over that edge. She gives us a nice clean detail there, hopefully with not too many dimples or any kind of telegraphing and keep to the correct shape of the dashboard. Next, we're going to trim the back edge so that we're sitting right up against our tabs all the way down. And then we're going to glue the back edge with our super adhesive in about three quarters of an inch. Our back edge glue line. And then looking at our glue line on our dashboard here. So what we're doing is we're just staying below bull nose. So we got glue here and here, but we don't have any glue on the foam. If we have glue on the foam anywhere, we'll have a dimple. And then looking at our contact area up under the brow. So I'm using two different contacts here. Got the super adhesive in the front here. Uh, this will lip under the backside here. And then this is our uh, spray grade brushed out. And uh, the reason I'm brushing this bottom side is because anytime you have an inside radius, it's going to want to get some wrinkles in there. So this will help stick it down as we make these complex bends here. The other area we're going to have an issue with uh, when we pull it is going to be this inside radius here. It really does need some adhesive in there, but I'm afraid if I put some in there, uh, we're going to get some telegraphing that we're not going to be able to get away from. So uh, we'll take this outside in the sun, warm it up. Hopefully that works out. If it doesn't work, I'll pull it back in here and uh, apply some adhesive, but hopefully that'll bend around there and not have any wrinkles. So about three hours wrestling with this out in the sun. Uh, real, real tough bend on the inside there. But uh, if you play with it, stretch it, get it hot enough, you can pretty much get it to do what you need it to do. But uh, definitely a real wrestling match. I keep thinking they're going to get easier, but they're just getting tougher and tougher. All right, next, and then we're laying out our second piece of material. And the yellow line indicates our uh, second hold down strip. The yellow will actually be the glued down side to our metal, which will wrap underneath this metal strip oh, here. Sure. So we need to punch some holes in our second piece of material. Um, looks like it's uh, actual count is 676 holes. You can see I've got some numbers written down here. And so what we're using is a four millimeter punch. This is the type of hammer I'm using. I'm using some backing board, which is a uh, almost like a card that you would use for matting up a picture in a picture frame, uh, nice and dense. Um, corrugated card won't work for this. It'll need to be something fairly solid. 
in dance. A guy by the name of Daryl, uh, a few years back, made this up online. He restored a 912, did a real nice job on that. And he actually made this up in a computer program. And it's exact in every way, it's exact scale, exact hole count, and uh, everything about it is correct according to our original. So what I did on my particular printer, I played around with the uh, printout percentages, and for me, it uh, ended up 120% uh, would be an exact replica of the original. And using a four millimeter bit and this hammer here, we're gonna punch some holes. Also, best time to do this is going to be uh, when the temperature is cool. You want your material nice and stable. So I set this up overnight, uh, laid some books on it nice and flat, keep everything nice and uh, stable there. Grab a cup of coffee and let's punch some holes. And keeping it weighted down as we go. As I'm moving across, I'm using some uh, clear tape here just to hold together all the areas that become damaged. We want to just keep this flat as we're moving through it. And last one. Oh, sure glad that's over with. All right, well, definitely happy with that. So let's take a look at this punch here and see exactly what I'm using. So I tried several different uh, styles of punches. And this particular one here, this is the only one I could get to work through our paper template uh, without destroying the template and getting a clean hole all the way through our material. Uh, the trick with this one here is the approach angle of our cutter and edge on there and also the shape of it. I have good visibility all the way around and uh, this one will get the job done for you nicely. I'll put a link below in the video description box where you can get a set of these. Um, a definite must if you're going to do it yourself. Next, we're going to use the metal hold down strip and cut the back edge exactly in line with our batting. So that's going to have to sit tight right up against our first piece of dash. Next, we'll flip it upside down and do a very precise layout according to center of the speaker and this back edge and make sure we have plenty of trim. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making cuts and folding the back edge up against and onto the back side of this hold down strip and then centered as best we can onto our speaker center here. And then a very precise glue line, making sure we have no movement at all with our strip. And the glue needs to come right up to the edge, but no glue underneath the metal strip all the way down. and then running a marker around all the insides of the holes. And then we'll need to cut a piece of speaker cloth that's gonna lay on top of the batting, no glue on that. Here's a look at our original. And then reaching under very carefully and seating our tabs. two-sided clear tape just to stick down and position our batting. So what I'm doing is I'm just putting it on the high points, not putting it on the uh, indents in our ribs here, just the high points. And that's going to help hold it in position while we seat it tight right up against this back edge here. So we want to be seated nice and tight in there. We want it to just float in this area. It doesn't have to be stuck down with contact cement. And contact cement is not going to work well for this anyway, so we just want something to hold it uh, long enough to run a razor blade on there. And then once we have our batting in location, we can lay our speaker cloth right on top. And uh, that's also going to float. We're just going to pull over and uh, snug that down like that. That'll be the look. Just going real slow. And be careful not to stretch and pull it away from this back edge here. Our glue line is here and on the back side of this lip and here, being very careful not to get any contact cement on this leading edge. For our batting material, I'm just using a half inch nap that I managed to acquire at a local fabric store. And compared to our original, it looks pretty close in density and thickness. Uh, out of the box, it's a little bit fluffier and thicker to look at. After you start working with it, it does compact down. So pretty close there to our original.
And that's what our bottom glue line is going to look like. Also, uh, installing is really not too bad. There's just two studs, one here and one here that go through the back of the dashboard and some push-in style clips along the front here. And then a final look out here in the sun. If you decide to take on the dashboard yourself, I wish you guys the best of luck. I'm going to say the degree of difficulty restoring this dashboard is a 10. Uh, incredible amount of work in here. Uh, the more padding you put on here, the more forgiving it's going to be. Uh, probably move through it a little bit quicker. It'll be a little bit more forgiving for you. Uh, but the more padding you put on here, the more you're going to get away from the original detail and beauty of it. You can find everything you need in the video description box down below. I've got links listed to all the suppliers, all the supplies, and also a link to uh, this really cool template by Daryl's Garage. So a really big thanks to Daryl for the help out on that one. Well, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.